Well, hello. Don't tell my other half, but I've been spending some money. This is an amphibious flex wing flying inflatable boat. It's classified as a microlite and is a two seater powered by a Rotax 582. The boat part is a rigid inflatable boat or rib and it has a multi stepped hull which is needed for reaching the required takeoff speeds. I don't know much about these Rotax 582s other than the basics, so any advice would be really appreciated. All I know so far is that it runs. There are some gauges including an engine tachometer, temperature gauge, dual exhaust gas temperatures and an hour meter which I think says 25.11 hours. As mentioned, this is amphibious so it also has retractable landing gear. You can take off from a runway and land in the water or vice versa. Pretty neat, huh? The rear wheels have brakes which is how it's steered and they are retractable by pulleys and ropes. The nose wheel was the same and it's just on a dolly type hinges. This is the rudder control but it's not an aircraft rudder it's a boat rudder and there is the engine throttle. These are the cables that connect the bar to the boat rudder and it's hinged in case of an impact. The brake cables also connect here. The hull is self-draining or self-sinking depending on the circumstances. The choke control is here and there is another throttle control on the right hand side. Oh look, there is one of those other flying thingamajiggies. Don't know much about them, looks like wizardry to me. I like how everything has these safety backup cables, understandable with the big fan so close. And here is the fan. It's made by AR Plast, a French company I believe and no longer trading unfortunately. Ground adjustable by the looks of it. Again, never had anything to do with props. Rotor blades, maybe. The gearbox is an E-type with a 3 to 1 ratio. The engine is mounted upside down and has a cylinder head the same colour as a Smurf. Which is a nice feature. Wonder if it turns red when it gets hot. Or angry. It is an electric start, but it also has a backup recoil. There are a few things to do to it before I can test it on the water as an airboat. As the title suggests, I'm going to use the boat part of this microlite for a wing in ground effect vehicle. So here's the plan. The framework mounting the engine and seats just unbolts. I'm going to make a new framework and mount it in the same way. That means it will still be perfectly usable as the microlite it is. Nothing will be altered that isn't reversible. The new framework will be similar but have the added sections for wing spars and the tail. There are some interesting aerodynamics going on with a wig boat, centre of pressure changes and reduced drag due to reduced wing tip vortices. I'll talk about that once I've researched some more but in the meantime any information you would like to share on fixed wing craft, propellers, the Rotax 582 or wig vehicles, I'm all ears. The people in the comments were very helpful during the helicopter project and I'm sure with your help this machine will fly too. Here's one thing I like about all those safety cables. When you work on it, you can't lose anything. There is something else that I accidentally bought. Here we have an Australian Jabiru J2200 and like other things from Australia, it also spins the other way. I don't know, it's something to do with the Earth's rotation in different hemispheres. 
This Jabiru is a four-cylinder, four-stroke, air-cooled aircraft engine. It has two coils, two distributors and two sparks per cylinder. It's a solid lifter engine and the engine has a maximum RPM of 2950, which means it's a direct drive and you can mount a propeller right to the engine. No reduction needed. It is a 2.2 litre and has a single carburetor made by Bing. It also has an incorporated AC generator capable of generating 10 amps. The fully assembled J2200 engine ready to run weighs 61 kilograms. This isn't too bad for a four stroke and I can lift it without any troubles at all. The engine has a wonderful service history and is recorded to have done 393 hours from new. Of course, the best way to assess the internal condition of an engine is to taste the oil. What you want is a nice rich flavour oil, nothing too tangy or bitter. It should be quite succulent with no significant aftertaste. It should leave you wanting more, but try to resist that temptation. The price of oil is pretty high these days, particularly aviation grade oil. I expect I will use this engine for the wig boat because I like the fact that it's a four stroke. I like that it's air cooled and it's only around 10 kilograms heavier than the fully operating Rotax but has another 15 horsepower. No coolant to worry about, no gearbox to maintain and no mixing of two stroke fuel. The pros I think outweigh the cons. In the last video I mentioned a man called Kester Haynes and his aquaplane. Here he is again flying his homemade machine and I took a short journey to go and see this machine for myself. What a treat it was to meet Kester and see what he had created. I must also say thanks to Chelsea for the homemade pizza. On first seeing the machine, I was surprised at the overall size of it. It isn't easy to judge from the online footage I'd seen. It was a bit bigger than expected and at this point I had planned to make sponsons from aluminium. Kester's sponsons are nearly four meters long and it became clear that building these would be a large and expensive task. They are also very light for their size, only weighing 17 kilograms each. That means the boat part to Kester's aquaplane is 34 kilograms. Compare that to the fib boat, which weighs 75 kilograms, and you can see how lightweight that design decision was. It was then I realized how much thought had gone into building this, and it wasn't going to be a quick and easy thing to build. It's definitely one of the coolest machines I've seen. He let me sit in it, and I imagined what it would be like to fly. The main thought that crossed my mind was one of trepidation, and that, my friends, ticks the boxes. There is an aluminium square section framework attaching everything together, and there is also a way to adjust the position of the engine and seat via clamps to fine tune the balance. The elevator and ailerons look to be controlled via push pull cables and the rudder via paraglider line and pulleys. There are two wing spars per wing and they slide one over the other for assembly. The tail also gets assembled at the water side and it takes around 45 minutes to get it flight ready. If there was a way to make the setup time slightly less, that would be good, but it has to stay lightweight. You might think having the wings fold up and down via hydraulics while you're sat comfortably is a great idea, but in practice, this would be far too heavy a solution. There are loads of things to think about in the design of this project and lots to learn, which I'm really looking forward to and hoping it will be of interest to you too.